welcome back to my channel where this week we're going to be talking all about 80s horror and I cannot be more excited. 80s horror is a lot of fun. There's a lot of great movies in here, a lot of really iconic ones that come to mind, but I wanted to start off this 80s week by talking about a movie that I personally had one, never seen, never really heard of, but I had seen some good reviews on Letterboxd that I made it to my watch list. So when I was planning out this week, I'm like, you know what? Let's watch The Changeling. And let me know if you've seen this movie down below. This movie came out in 1980 and it is directed by Peter Maddock and written by William Gray and Diana Maddox. So yeah, let me know if you guys have seen this movie, let me know what you think, because I kind of went into this movie pretty blind. All I knew was that it was a ghost story, and since I went into it pretty blind, this review is not going to contain any spoilers, so just going to really be giving you guys my thoughts from when I just finished watching the movie. And before I get into the review, my thoughts of the movie, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you guys aren't subscribed. I'm posting every single day in the month of October, and if you guys haven't caught up on my other reviews, make sure to do so. There's a playlist on my channel, 31 Nights of Horror 2022 edition, that you guys can watch those videos if you haven't seen them but yeah but yeah without further ado let's start talking about the changeling john russell a composer from new york city moves to seattle following the deaths of his wife and daughter in a tragic accident while he was having car trouble he soon views and rents a mansion from an agent at a local history society who tells him that the property has been vacant for 12 years and with that little synopsis i'm sure we all know what that means this house has ghosts in them this movie was really interesting for me to watch because as I was watching it there were a lot of tropes that are in a ton of haunted house and ghost stories happening but I had to remember that this movie came out in 1980 and it was really one of the first of its kind to start developing these tropes. I'm trying to think of all of the ghost stories haunted house movies that I've seen and I think that this is one of the earlier ones that I've seen and it's really interesting I'm not sure if this happens to you guys sometimes but like sometimes when I was watching this movie I was like oh my god they do this in every single horror movie and I was like wait this was one of the first I can't judge it for that and what I really like about this movie too is that it really doesn't show us much it really relies a lot on this production design and the cinematography to sell us in this mood in this mood and atmosphere that the story does have and the movie starts off pretty tragic it really doesn't take time for it to be happy at first or a happy little family his daughter and his wife are killed like literally probably in the first five minutes of the movie so from that moment on up until the rest of the movie there's a lot of tragedy and loss just looming around even before we get to figure out what's happening in the house and I think that decision was really smart for the screenplay because it really started us off with this like bad feeling when you see something like that happen and it hurts this character from the beginning so you know especially when we start getting into the nitty-gritty of the house which I won't really be getting into spoilers here as I've previously said but when we start getting into the details of the house and the ghosts it almost tries to tie back into what he was experiencing since there's a whole lot of loss in general because because anytime there's a ghost, it means they died, obviously. All of these themes and storylines of death all kind of are coming together and it's affecting our main character who is living in the house but also just experienced immense loss himself. And speaking of our main character, although I think he's really well played by George C. Scott, I think he's great in this role and I think the acting in this movie is really great. His character himself, I had a really hard time kind of figuring out what he had to really do in this story, if that makes sense, because like I said, there's a lot of connections with the ideas of loss and death, and obviously he's alone in this house, so that's another big factor that plays into the scares and such, but I feel like his character at the same time was so confident the whole time, it didn't feel like he was ever in real danger, and although there were dangerous situations happening and scary stuff like doors opening and, you know, just like the typical things that ghosts do in these movies, I felt like he was way too smart and way too confident I'm just gonna keep saying that word confident in himself and in this situation where I feel like they never gave him a weak spot with all of this I thought they were gonna do something where they were gonna play into the insanity factor of grief and what he's going through and stuff like that I think his character was way too normal in this situation and it kind of took me out of the story but other than that when we actually do get into learning about the ghost and the mystery which it is interesting to learn about and I like that we kind of are putting the pieces together in this movie with along the other characters. I feel like I never understood what the ghost himself wanted with the main character because usually in these type of movies there's some connection. I feel like there was gonna be a moment where it would all make sense as to why this has happening, why it was like him that was chosen because I guess it could have just been a coincidence thing but I think the movie could have been a little bit more interesting if there was a little bit more in there and if you guys have seen the movie and if you guys can answer that question for me I'd be so happy so please let me know down below but this movie 
also takes its time. It's very slow and the movie is a little bit under two hours and I'm gonna say to me it felt way longer. Like I feel like a lot of it dragged and the movie does not rely on jump scares or really extravagant scares which I really like because it kind of just depends on this atmosphere and this house and just these little things that are happening around that just make you feel really scared and eerie without it really doing anything which is really great but I feel like the movie just took way too long to do a lot of things and just dragged and dragged and dragged. But also I think there is a positive with this because it's almost like the movie is letting us breathe. We get a seance, we get nightmares, like when we have really important scenes like that, the movie doesn't just move on to the next thing, it really lets it settle with its characters and lets it settle with us, which is also a good thing. I just think it was more of like, in my opinion, I think there should have been a little balance between the two because definitely there were moments where I just think they could have skipped over a couple of things and kept the story going and I thought the pacing was a little off in those moments. And also, there's a lot of other cool ways that this movie scares you. I also really like the soundtrack and the cinematography is really cool. There's a lot of these really great POV point of view shots that just like move around the room in a really seamless and great way and it's terrifying the way they do it. It really puts you into the story a lot more and just scares the crap out of you. Like actually, I think it's really cool how they do it. It happens a quite a couple of times and the cinematography in general is really cool. And there's a lot of really great editing happening as well where they show something that the character is seeing but it's not really there or it's happening in another room, in another place, in another time. Really cool technical stuff happening in this movie. I really do think that this movie is a really great horror film made on a technical level, but I think its story could have used a little bit of work. And the last thing that I really did like about the story though, and I'm gonna say this, the ending of the movie was freaking crazy. I don't even think I really understand what happened at the end, I'm not gonna lie because there was like a lot of crazy stuff happening and it kind of goes back to what I was just saying about the editing. It like shows things and you're not really sure if it's really there or if it's not there because the movie has this like really weird ending that it's like what does this even mean? Like even the characters themselves are a little bit confused. So I think this movie is not one of the best movies from the 1980s, but it's also not a bad movie at all. I think, like I said, the technical aspects of this movie are really great. If you want to see a movie with really great cinematography, I feel like this is one that's honestly overlooked. I think the movie's overlooked in general because I had never really heard much about it. But from a story standpoint, I feel like there were a lot of missed opportunities that they could have done to make it a lot, make it a lot better of a movie. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you have seen this movie, please let me know down below so we can continue talking about it. And the schedule for this week is already up on my community tab if you want to watch the movies before I end up reviewing them. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching again and I'll make sure to see you all in the next spooky video. Bye everyone!